You are listening to the Heartland Author Podcast. I am Aaron Apollo Camp. For this episode, I had the opportunity to interview Michael LaRusso. Michael is the author of the Sales Professional Survivor's Guide, a book that, as its name suggests, is about the high turnover sales professional field. I'm here with Mike LaRusso, who is the author of the Sales Professionals Survivor's Guide and uh, has a lot of experience in the sales professional world. Mike, welcome to the Heartland Author Podcast. Thank you, Aaron. Excited to be here. Feel free to introduce yourself to our listeners. First, and just a a minor correction, it's uh, the Sales Professional Survival Guide. Survival guy. Oh, okay. survival. Just in case you got to punch it into Amazon. Uh, but um, I'm a sales professional, uh, consultant, new business development specialist, and I've been doing it for about 40 years, both as a, an employee and a um, independent contractor. I don't like the term consultant; it's too fancy. When you say consultant, they make you buy lunch. But um, uh, my specialty, like I said, has been uh, been hired by organizations and they either want to open a new territory, uh, sell a new type of product, or even just doing a data analysis to find uh, new sales revenues in places that have never looked. So um, the book is more uh, focused on the hunting aspect of what I do in terms of business development and the different methods for prospecting that are out there. And I kind of blow up the myths and um, I formalize the methods that I've used for 40 years. Um, Initially, it was all by my wits and intuition. And then at one point, a few years back, I decided I wanted to write them down on paper, a step-by-step guide, which has never been done before, almost like building an engine. And this could be used by uh, sales professionals in general uh, as a a tutorial or a manual for how to get new business. And uh, that's basically what the book is in terms of the nuts and bolts. But there's uh, other aspects to it as well, if you'd like me to continue. Without spoiling too much of the Sales Professionals Survival Guide, there I got the title correct. What is that book about? Um, It's about the... um, the existence, of, I'm sorry, the uh, description of the modern sales environment and uh, the problems and obstacles that are faced by sales professionals uh, through different things like extensive processes and just uh, uh, an old myriad of uh, time consuming uh, obstacles that they have to face and it affects their uh, income. And that's the survival aspect of it, uh, financial survival. So uh, I, it's, it starts out as a commentary. I explain a lot of the obstacles that a sales professional is going to face. I show how to overcome them. One of the main things, certainly in, in new prospecting, is using my methodology, tactical prospecting, and which is the foundation for the alliance process, which is part of the book as well. And then in addition, I um, created uh, brand new sales metrics equations so they could be used as analytics to gauge the productivity. Because a lot of what's in the sales uh, in the sales world is superficiality, pie in the sky thinking, just kind of like um, let's be creative on the back of a sales professional in terms of our management and our our um, the metrics that we use, and it has no real basis in reality. So I created new metrics so you can gauge all of the things that I'm uh, that I'm kind of like bloviating about in the book, so I can support what I say. And the big difference with this book is that in terms of sales, it's revolutionary in the fact that it is it is a real step by step on how to do it from start to finish, how to hunt for new business, how to actually gauge what you're doing, whether it's working or not. And then lastly, um, through the 40 years of my perspective, it's um, the commentary on what I've run into, what is out there now in terms of the obstacles. And there's more and more uh, with the advent of IT tools that are designed to help sales productivity. But actually, unless they use properly, the, the opposite is, is, is what happens. And um, so it's a realistic view. It's not something that I've done research on and, you know, cut and paste. This is all my 40 years of experience. So I know what works, what doesn't, and I support it all. Now, to give our listeners who might not be too familiar with sales professional work, what is the job of being a sales professional like for the typical sales professional? 
the typical and certainly as it relates to what I'm uh, trying to teach is um, you work for an organization and they have a product or service and your job is to uh, learn the product and go find customers who are the right target to buy the product. Now, that's what it is on the surface. And you're out there, you know, the term hunting is used often. But you're looking for potential customers, which are called prospects, who are a good match for your for your product. Now, the the issue of the problem with a sales professional is that they're the profession is a performance based compensation profession. So you earn money by how well you perform. But a lot of the obstacles that are put in your way are mandatory prospecting methods that are forced upon you or other, like I said, uh, ancillary processes that just get in your way and eat up your time. But as it relates to the prospecting aspect, um, you've heard of things like cold calling, knocking on doors, telemarketing. It hasn't changed in 40 years in terms of uh, what is believed to work. And when it doesn't work, because it can't work anymore, it's just not a, a productive manner to, to hunt for new business, the sales professional themselves is blamed. And then what happens is it's, it turns into, which is what it is now, the highest churn profession there is. Um, I've worked at organizations where there's literally 100% turnover of the sales team. And if you thought about that in any other department in a, in a company, if the accounting department was turned over 100%, you'd be scratching your head saying, wait, wait, something's wrong here. It shouldn't have, but only in sales is the the failure of the productivity blamed on the sales professional and they, they suffer the consequence. When really the issue is that there's got to be different ways for you to go find potential customers for your product. And that's what I teach in the book. Now, if you could, you briefly touched on tactical prospecting and the alliance mm -hmm. processing prospecting process. If you could tell us a little bit more sure. about both of those, that would be wonderful. Okay. Tactical prospecting is both, it's a, it's, it's a tact, it's a tactic and it's also a philosophy and no sales um, strategy is going to work unless there's some basics in place. The structure of the organization has to promote sales in a positive way. And also the tactic that you're allowed to employ must work quickly. It can't take forever because whether like as a related to me, if I was doing a consulting job or just generally as a sales professional on a deadline, uh, I'm sorry, on a time frame, there's a deadline. So with the consultant, I was usually on a six month contract. So I had to learn the product, find the customer, sell the customer all within a six month period and enough to you know pr produce enough money. Uh, but uh, just in terms of deadlines, you're on quota or you're on a monthly uh, time frame or a quarterly, and you've got to produce enough appointments, gain enough appointments to, so you can go pitch your product and sell it within that time frame. So with tactical prospecting, the two things it addresses is the first one is I, I call it the tactical mentality. That's where sales in an organization has to be believed and understood to be the most important thing. So all the processes within all the departments, not only the sales department, are there to promote doing sales, doing business, whether it's accounting, the contract department, inventory. They have to have sales as the most important thing in terms of their methodologies and how they do things. They can't be a hindrance, which happens all the time. Um, but secondly, tactical prospecting is this three principles, but the main principle is being able to produce enough in the shortest period of time. And the metric I use in a book is to judge your productivity hour by hour, not in a 30 day period and nine how much am I producing in an hour? And if I don't see any gain that way, then I have to alter my prospecting. But the key thing, the key difference is, let me, let me step back and I'll give you an example. If, if a salesperson goes and works for a company and um, they have a product and they learn about it and they learn who the target customer is, they may get a list somewhere in some database of 100 potential prospects that match this. And then they try every way under the sun to communicate with them. They'll email, they'll call, they'll go knock on the door. And it's random because it's cold. That's why they call it cold calling. You don't know if the customer is, a, is ready for your product and the customer doesn't know you from Adam, you're a stranger. And you don't even, you know, they don't know anything about you. So that type of, of hunting is just, um, it's endemic of having uh, obstacles already part of it. Like you have to be trusted, you have to be vetted, you have to get by the gatekeeper, et cetera, et cetera. Now with tactical prospecting and just my methodology in general is you're not hunting for businesses at the initial step. You're looking for people who have access to businesses that you sell. 
So it's almost uh, the alliance process. It comes from forming allies with people who have customer bases or prospect bases that they're connected to that can help you get into them and avoid all of those obstacles. So like I said, if I'm a, uh, if I'm a salesperson and I line up 100 potential prospects and I go knock on all those doors or call them all, and I maybe get two or three appointments out of it, which is generous, by the way. Um, and then I go and sell them, I try and sell them, and they have a terrible closing ratio with that type of prospect. And so maybe I'll make them, like I said, I'll be generous. I'll make one sale out of that. With my methodology, if I find an, al an ally who has a similar type of product or has a connection into those type of customers, I can tell them all about the product because I'm forming a relationship with them. That's part of uh, the methodology in the book. I form a business development relationship with them. I describe what I'm selling and they go through their database, either their mental database, their customer database, et cetera, the connections that they have with these potential customers. And they say, you know what, of, of the hundred I have, three of them match what you're looking to sell. And you get walked in the door basically because you already have the vetting done and it's they're kind of vouching for you is a simple way to put it. So now I have my same three appointments, except I didn't waste 97% of my time addressing 100 other potential businesses that had no, um, no chance at all of even wanting to see you. So that's kind of like the speed of it. Now, if you have multiple allies, now you can kind of see the exponential productivity aspect of it. I hope I wasn't too in the weeds, but that's <laughs> probably the simplest way I can to describe it. How long did it take you to write your book? Um, are you sitting down? <laughs> I'm not sure how I'm, I'm, different people ask uh, answer this question. It took me 10 years. 10 and years? I can, well, let me, I'm going to give myself uh, two defenses here. One is that uh, when I started writing the book, it was more of, I have to start describing what the problems are in the sales world because it's just destroying businesses. It's destroying professions, sales professions, et cetera. And I mean that literally. Um, so it was almost like a, you know, a cathartic type of, I don't want to say complaining, but it was pointing out a lot of negatives. And then I used my methods and I formalized that to be the solution. So in essence, what I did do is I wrote two separate books. So if you want to break it off, it was five years, five years, but the other book hasn't been published yet, the second one. But the real reasoning beyond it is uh, I was into year five <laughs> and I was getting concerned and I spoke to a sales engineer friend of mine and, and he said, look, if, if you were trying to write a step-by-step -step process for changing a light bulb, on the surface, you would think it'd take you no time. It'd be 30 seconds I can write the this, this steps. And then you realize as you're writing it, there's a bunch of other steps that you never thought of. And after a while, it could be 20 or 30 steps. So if you take that concept and add it to, I mean, uh, um, uh, use it with prospecting for new customers, it can be, and that's what happened. It was just tremendously long to make it as accurate as possible because you'd say, oh, I'm done. I'm saying, well, wait a minute, here's a variable and here's another variable. And then finally, after that, I realized to support it all, so it didn't look like me just making up other pie in the sky type of strategies, I created analytical equations. So anyone can go in and they can punch in the numbers that they're dealing with, the productivity numbers, whether it's number of calls or closing ratio of a sale, they can punch it into one of several equations that I have, and it can show exactly what's going to happen. So it can be used by, uh, a lot of different level types of uh, sales professionals. And that's pretty much what took so long. I mean, the the, the analytics part alone took uh, at least two years to make it right. You know, putting decimal places in the right spot, things like that. Now, tell us a little bit more about your uh, second book that's upcoming without spoiling too much of it. Okay, the, the first book is more, you can consider it a textbook. This is a, a manual, a tutorial on how step by step. So almost like I said, it's like building an engine. The second book is almost complete commentary. And in both books, um, I've been through, like I said, I've been doing this 40 years. I have hundreds of sales anecdotes that I've lived personally, and they relate to a lot of the, uh, the concepts and the issues that I bring up. So it shows, you see, this is what I went through and this is how I cured it. The, the other book is 
um, just soup to nuts, a ton of these anecdotes. So there's more entertaining. It's more kind of crazy in terms of what happens in a sales world, but it also is very right between the eyes of the problems in the sales profession. It's almost like uh, you can consider it a reality TV show for a book, except there's, it's, <laughs> it's the stuff I've lived. <laughs> um, what was the hardest part of uh, writing a book coming from your background as a sales professional? Uh, the hardest, I, I always had some, uh, I've been doing some writing for the most of my life, mostly creative writing. So the writing part wasn't really an issue to me. Um, it's almost became a, a cathartic experience, but uh, the hardest part was actually putting down everything that is key in, like I said, if I was building an engine, you couldn't leave parts out, you know, so I couldn't leave parts out because they all kind of interrelated. And I think the, the the thing that really was more glowing to me was the fact that if you didn't do all of it, you couldn't do any of it because it would kind of leave it like a non-working engine and how labor intensive it was. I mean, just beyond, uh, you know, uh, putting down uh, on paper my methodology that was all in my head. Now you're talking about the basics of grammar and sentence structure and because you have to be exacting in your language. And it's, you know, a lot of words you thought meant something when you look them up, realize it didn't mean that it was you know, a little different than what you thought words you've used your whole life. And they were just a tweak off from the actual meaning. So there was a lot of that type of research. And then when it came to the analytics, uh, creating new mathematical equations, I um, hired a couple of math tutors to just check my math as well, because you want to make sure that the structure of the equations are accurate, too. Uh, but I would say the editing overall of, of the equations and the writing itself uh, was probably the hardest because anyone can write anything down. You can just, you know, you can have an emotion or a passion and write it down on paper and say, oh, yeah, I feel good now. I got it off my chest, but then someone else has to read it. So it has to be, uh, you know, legible and, and communicate exactly what you're trying to say. What was your most interesting experience uh, for better or worse as a sales professional? Well, better is when um, I come up, and this takes a lot. This is one of my expertises. It takes a lot of creativity, depending on the type of product you're selling, especially if it if it's a commoditized product and everyone's got it. Now you got to find a different way to move it. That's that you know gets finds new customers, or because the existing customers are either they either have the product or it's kind of like through its life cycle. So the creativity aspect of of what I did in my profession. Um, and creating new business in, in, in different ways was, was gratifying. But more to the other point, and the reason for the book is, um, I mentioned that uh, a lot of my career was as a consultant, independent contractor is more accurate. And as I was writing the book, I was scanning my brain in terms of uh, like I said, experiences I, that, that can relate to things I was trying to say. And then I realized that that company is no longer there or that company is no longer in the, in the same structure that it was. And I realized that over 90% of the organizations I worked for no longer exist, certainly not in the way that they did when I worked for them. And they all went away and none of it was due to a lack of sales. And that was the most frustrating thing to me. They either had enough sales or enough potential sales to stay in business and grow, but they were just, as I put in the book, they were just decisioned into the grave. And that was, you know, like I say, a cathartic experience, an epiphany that uh, I didn't realize that, wow, you know, um, what I'm writing, there's a reason that I'm feeling this, this frustration is because, you know, you have viable entities that are just kind of like, you know, they, they, they uh, are blown away in the wind for no reason other than um, mismanagement. And getting back to what I said earlier, if I'm in a profession that, I only earn money depending on my performance and my performance is being affected by poor decisions by management. Then you can imagine the, uh, the financial survival that you're risking. Hence the title. Mike, you were a wonderful guest for the Heartland author podcast. And I thank you for appearing on this podcast. Oh, I appreciate you having me. Michael was a very insightful guest. 
This is Aaron Apollo Camp reminding y'all to write your imagination. Bye for now. You can learn more about me and my book writing projects at camparenapollo.witsite.com forward slash author AAC. You can follow me on Facebook at author AAC and on Instagram at AAC Scribe. Copyright 2023, Aaron Apollo Camp, all rights reserved. This podcast episode is intended for the private listening of our audience. Any reuse or retransmission of this podcast episode without the express written consent of the podcast host is prohibited, except under fair use guidelines. Royalty-free music and sound effects obtained from https colon forward slash forward slash www.zapsplat.com.